Over the past four years, School Infrastructure New South Wales has been at the forefront of the New South Wales Government's response to population growth in New South Wales, investing more than $7.9 billion to continue its program to deliver 215 new and upgraded schools. This is the largest investment in public education infrastructure in the history of New South Wales. Today, Anthony will share more on the Meadowbank Education and Employment Precinct model. Please welcome Anthony Manning. Uh, good afternoon. I'll, um, I'll endeavour to, to follow the high energy um, to, talk about, to talk about Meadowbank. Um, so, good afternoon and thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about Meadowbank. Um, Education and Employment Precinct, also going to talk a little bit about some of the development we're doing around delivery mechanisms as well. Uh, and Meadowbank represents a really interesting opportunity for us as a first project with a co-located TAFE on a, on a TAFE site, um, delivered in the middle of COVID, um, with, with the school open already and the TAFE due to arrive pretty soon. Um, and I, I should acknowledge my TAFE colleagues in the room who have been on the journey with us as well. Um, any questions Paul can, Paul can answer afterwards, there's quite quite happy for that. Um, so I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land on which we're gathered today, pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging, um, as, well as, as well as any other Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who are, who are present. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who may never have heard of school infrastructure, uh, uh, created in 2017, um, we now have a total of $15 billion um, to invest in school infrastructure. We're about halfway through, uh, and we look forward to the 21st of June for a budget to continue to add to that number. Um, 215 schools, um, we, don't, we not only deliver major capital projects, but we're also responsible for all the maintenance of schools as well, which you can imagine is, is a pretty significant task in, it, in itself. Um, 2,200 schools, um, more than 20,000 structures, uh, average age of about 50 years, so some of our stuff is well over 100 years old um, and still still in action today and working for us really well. Um, just recently, around stimulus and jobs infrastructure, uh, uh, stimulus really around um, uh, roof maintenance programs, another 60 million spent into roof replacement programs, which has been really uh, good spend, particularly given the amount of rain we've had this year. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that's had a significant effect for us. Um, metro and regional Renewal Program is a program um, co-funded between us and schools and PNCs and all the money that they have raised. Um, and there is a lot of money out there um, waiting to be spent in schools to improve the assets. Um, and we're working through an LED lighting program. So for 157 million, uh, about half the fleet is being upgraded to reduce our energy use. So there's a, there's a real broad range of, of projects um, and interesting things that, are, that we're working on through as, as part of delivery of what we do. Um, so really talk about Meadowbank. So, so Meadowbank um, is a co-location of Marsden High School and Meadowbank Primary School. Um, it, it is a, a very significant development for us, school infrastructure. So having done um, Arthur Phillip High School um, and Inner Sydney High School, this is a 40,000 square metre um, structure. Um, it is 1,500 place high school uh, and 1,000 place primary school um, and about 120 um, places for an intensive English centre as well. It is on the Meadowbank TAFE site um, and as part of the development for this we realised there was a really significant opportunity um, to join the relationship between schools and TAFE um, and to allow a development to occur that was broader than just um, the school itself. Um, <clears throat> so vocational training really at its, at its heart um, the TAFE facility really is the multi-trades and the digital technology hub. Um, there is space for industry innovation and collaboration as part of the TAFE uh, and ability to deliver digital and interactive training. So a really important opportunity for us to go from uh, a primary school setting into a high school setting and then with a building across the courtyard that is the TAFE that opens up the door for industry to come in through as well. So a really interesting opportunity for us um, not just from a school perspective and a school infrastructure perspective, but from a Department of Education perspective as well. So some really significant opportunities um, in that space. Uh, and the vision was really for it to become placemaking. Um, so what do we need to bring to this space? What, what are the opportunities? Um, and also what are the opportunities that this creates for the broader community um, that it sits in? Um, 
Um, and there was a fantastic piece of work done by Greater Sydney Commission to look at surrounding areas. Um, as I said, the, the school is now open, so despite COVID, um, we got the 40,000 square metre school built within 17 months um, and worked our way through it. The precinct itself, and again, this is the first part of the precinct, um, there were nine key elements to the precinct plan that we worked through with Greater, Greater uh, Sydney Commission. Um, so one was around living streets, so prioritising pedestrian and cyclist movement. One was around enhancing the connectivity. Um, so we looked at, as part of the broader precinct, an overpass over Victoria Road and an underpass beneath the railway line that connect up with the school. Um, we talked walking to school as a really significant opportunity here for us in, in what many of you will know is a very traffic dense environment, um, but quite a lot of residences around and quite a lot of opportunity for that. Um, <coughs> we were still looking as part of the precinct to improve vehicle access, again, so that flow works really well, um, but we're really clear about pedestrian and cycle sharing. Um, we looked at entry points as well. So again, one of the key aspects we saw was two railway stations. Um, uh, you know, TAFE is a well-established piece. How do we begin to use those to make those work really well through us as well? Green infrastructure, so there is a substantial amount that we kept um, from some of these images, um, some of the mature trees as part of this process as well. Again, to make it as welcoming as we could possibly make it. Uh, and make it work and we looked at kind of actually how does this help with some of the jobs creation and, and, and around it and what we found was there was quite a bit of light industrial immediately adjacent to the TAFE site and so there are some significant opportunities as part of this process to make those things work their way through. Um, you'll be unsurprised to see that we are, we are very proud of the school that we delivered. Um, uh, a significant opportunity for us in terms of upgrading learning environments for, for primary school students. So this is an example of a, uh, of a classroom and this is a standard classroom that we now begin to deliver in terms of spaces. Um, certainly very different um, to many of the schools any of us would have been to from, a, from the furniture and the colour scheme um, through to the size and shape of the classroom itself. Um, secondary school, again, very similar. I see highly flexible highly usable, um, a lot of um, mixed furniture, a lot of mixed mode settings, um, and we've been getting a lot of great feedback across the portfolio, both from students and teachers about how those things work. Um, as always, um, our sporting facilities continue to be significant, so anybody who's seen um, inner Sydney High School, uh, it is a 12-storey building sitting on top of a basketball court, uh, and some of the uh, concrete and some of the, the um, structural infrastructure is worth going to look at if you're not interested in basketball court. But again, um, th this is a, a, a premium grade basketball court available to the school to use uh, and available for the community out of hours as well. And so there are changing rooms situated um, uh, for easy access for out of hours use. But again, a very significant piece of infrastructure. Uh, and <coughs> what the slide doesn't show is a full blown stage at the other end of the um, hall. Um, and all the AV equipment that you could possibly need um, for a major production. So again, this is about equipping the school as best we can um, to make sure that the students can have as much opportunity as they possibly can as they work their way through. Um, the technology and applied sciences spaces are pretty fantastic as well, um, from metalworking rooms um, through to the um, catering uh, equipment, stuff that works. So again, very significant investment in VET equipment and we see this as a really big opportunity between ourselves and TAFE um, to bridge that gap. It gives us an opportunity to think about utilisation of those spaces, sharing of those spaces, how those access work, and how we can give experience to teachers that are learning to teach in this space and how we're working the students through as well. Um, and there's already a significant opportunity in the fact that it's a primary school and a high school for year six kids at the primary school to access the high school and the high school facilities. So it doesn't feel so scary when they get to year seven, but they can take advantage of those. And so we know from a TAFE perspective that, that will flow through um, as well. And the vet hospitality kitchens themselves are pretty significant pieces them, themselves. So there's a, there's a video, I'll show the testimony from one of the uh, head teachers, I think. Hi, I'm Kirsty Hadfield. I'm the head teacher of secondary studies at Marsden High School. I'm also the vet hospitality teacher, the food technology teacher, and I'm part of the TAS faculty. I am so excited because I'm going from three classrooms to hospitality room, two kitchens, massive storage areas, and in addition to that, we've even got two general learning spaces where we've got demonstration rooms. 
On top of that, we've got a cafe where it's got seating for indoor and outdoor areas for both staff and students. The technology in this area is great. I mean, the students have the opportunity to serve customers, have a point of sale using actual cash registers. They're going to be using a lot of commercial equipment. They're going to be using combi ovens. They've got gas inductions. Um, we've got also in both kitchens and the preparation area, commercial equipment, including a commercial dishwasher. Here at Marsden, we actually offer vet hospitality, both in food and beverage and kitchen operations. At the end of their time at Marsden, they will actually be credited with a qualification from TAFE. So when the students move on from Marsden High School and go to TAFE, they can pursue a career in hospitality, but we also have other vet courses like construction, retail, business services, and entertainment. And having tape right next door is a fantastic opportunity for them to pursue their gifts and talents. That's good. I think um, certainly those of us from an infrastructure perspective think putting a school next to a TAFE um, is a no-brainer and it'll all work out just fine. We found that a lot of years of schools and TAFE being in competition with one another um, and so this is really the first opportunity we've had to bring the two groups together to actually do some analysis around what they, what they both do, what they can both share and how they can work in unison with each other. Uh, and I think it represents a really significant step um, for both us and for TAFE. Um, and later on the slide I'll talk about the next generation of that model in terms of how that rolls through. Um, but is a relationship that will grow and grow. Um, and it's worth also pointing out that Meadowbank High School, there are 20 high schools in close proximity to this school for us. And so this will be the front door for all 20 of those schools into the same TAFE. So it's not just about the kids that goes to, goes to the new Meadowbank, it's actually about the kids that, that will continue to go um, from other schools as well. So hopefully the, we've got some slides. So, so one of the things we are very proud of is that actually um, the Meadowbank School was really one of our m big projects in modern methods of construction. So this is really about prefabrication of components um, that go together to actually deliver the school. So this is a this is a picture of um, is essentially the production line for the internal wall systems. So every single one of the internal walls, the non-load bearing walls, um, was produced out of this of four wall types, depending on what's inside the wall. But essentially, we had um, uh, Roberts Co. managed to get a plasterboard manufacturer to supply plasterboard exactly to the size of those units. So there's no wastage. This could all be produced off-site before we needed it to go on-site. Um, and so massively reduced the amount of time and the amount of mess and the amount of waste. And I think they did some work um, between Concord uh, Hospital and this around plasterboard waste. Um, and this way, the waste here was about four tonnes as opposed to 40 on other projects. So a whole series of opportunities emerged themselves from this. From, from this, what is relatively uh, low-key manufacturing, but the more we do, the more this can roll into, the value and the savings that come out of the time spent in this space, uh, but also how quickly we can put it up. So a 40,000 square metre structure completed in 17 months, including the COVID shutdowns and the restricted hours we had as well. So a very significant piece. Um, and also for us, we focused on um, prefabricated components that could be produced in Australia um, and ideally in New South Wales. Um, I think it was kind of more luck than judgment where COVID came along. We were actually ahead of the supply chain. But again, an opportunity for us, if we are going to look at how we do pre prefabrication, how can we keep local trades working, and how do we make sure that supply chain is as short as it can possibly be to make it work. So again, we're, we're really very excited about where this model goes. Um, the next school for the same, out of the same design is the Sydney Olympic Park High School, which is working its way through at Wentworth Point. Um, and again, as a, as a big reinforced concrete structure, um, th this is a real opportunity for us to do something quite exciting and quite different. Um, we're beginning to roll this out across a, a range of projects, d different styles depending on the size and scale. Um, but we do believe the work we're doing is around trying to create a, a competitive and emerging market for this. Um, market capability is, is growing uh, and a, as a client organisation, uh, I think we have an obligation to ask for it. Um, so the market is creating it. Uh, we think there's a better allocation of risk with us and the contractor in terms of how this, how this works. And the one thing we have absolutely noticed is from a quality and from a safety perspective, it is head and shoulders better 
than a traditional build. So the quality is really outstanding, and the more and more stuff that is made in a factory environment, the, the health and safety and the opportunities around diversity of the workforce are really significant in this space too. So again, we're using some of these projects to test the logic of this. Um, and there is a point in this um, where we do move to, to prefabrication that again, we can involve um, our VET students and TAFE in making sure that actually there's an education process as part of how this works its way through. So again, we see this as a really big opportunity for us. And again, the relationship we're building with TAFE allows us to move down this, down this role uh, quite nicely. And as, if, and as if by magic, Steve turns up. Fantastic. Um, so so the, the last thing really, the next generation of this for us um, really is, is the redevelopment of the Liverpool Boys and Girls High School uh, as part of the Liverpool Innovation Precinct. Um, so it was, a, it was a project funded in the last budget. We're working our way through the details of it. Uh, we see it as a massive opportunity really around cementing the community, use of that, of that significant space um, outside, of the, outside of the hospital. Um, some really interesting opportunities to build on the work that the high schools have done in terms of local industry and relationship with community and councils. Um, the opportunity to co-locate with TAFE is, is as, as strong here as it is anywhere else. Um, and really that, that the, the whole idea with the LIP and the steering committee is really how education can, can place into, into that. Um, and this gives you a bit, of a bit of a snapshot of where we are from a structure plan perspective from a school site. Um, but there is the, the part of that picture really shows a redevelopment of the high school. There's some a, a additional development that the site can cope with as well, but includes the TAFE being integrated into the single structure. Um, so again, gives us much more flexibility around sharing of facilities, um, uh, sharing of resources, um, and really looks at it from a holistic perspective. Um, we've begun to work our way through what do we think uh, the model looks like that supports it, noting that Metabank is about technology um, and that, how that transfers into the school. But this, the idea being that really this could be something where we look at a health-focused concept from both a high school perspective and a TAFE perspective, noting um, how broad uh, a church the, the workforce needs of health are. Um, and really sees an opportunity really with the redevelopment of the hospital, the university and research hub coming through, uh, Catholic high school, and just Liverpool CBD redevelopment, a significant opportunity to do something quite different. So whilst we kind of, on the face of it, got money to redevelop the boys and girls high school, there is a much, much bigger opportunity here for us. And that's really to take the Metabank model and move it a little bit further forward, both from a mod method of construction perspective, but also from an integration um, between schools and, and TAFE. Um, and we'll keep you posted on, on that one as it works its way through. Um, other than that, that's the, that's the journey so far. So hopefully that's useful. Um, I say Paul's happy to answer any questions afterwards, particularly on the, on the Meadow Bank one, because um, we've, we've shared, some, shared some work over that one, and that's, but that's been a really good experience, and, and we can hope to continue more.